Warning, this content may be upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. Campers or rangers of Reddit, what's the most unsettling, creepy, and or supernatural thing that's happened to you while in the woods? This ended up being funny but at the time freaked me out at first. My wife and I were camping in one of the national forests in the mountains in NC. We were in a campground but not a lot of people there and the spots were semi-private because of trees and foliage, I jump up and go out of the tent thinking someone is messing around. Not a soul or any noise, nothing, I go back and lay down, and just falling asleep again. When it happens a second time. Same routine jump up check and nothing, so this time, I lay down but stay awake and have the tent unzipped ready to jump out and catch whoever is shining a light on the tent when it all lights up again. And I saw what was doing it right away. Fireflies were landing in mass on the tent and then they would all light up at once, I had a good chuckle over that one in the end. On a road trip with a friend, and we hiked into a trail in Colorado one evening to camp so we wouldn't have to pay for a campsite. Found a little clearing by a stream, my friend set up a tent while I decided to sleep under the stars, woke up to a ranger shaking me and asking if I saw where the bear went. Bear? What bear? Then I look up and see the woman's tent just shredded. Turns out she had left her food in her tent that night, we hung ours from a tree, and a curious bear came by at like 4 in the morning to have a snack, she decided to gtfo, though why she didn't bother waking either me or my friend up to let us know about this very hungry bear nearby, I don't know. Anyway, pretty freaky thing to wake up to. Buddy and I were hiking at dawn during a camping trip. Walking along a path and I hear a zing like a bird chirp by my ear. A second or so later a tree kind of pops next to my buddy. It's at this point we realize there was an accompanying crack and we'd been shot at, not sure if he was charged with anything. When I was a kid, about 12 or so, my dad would always wake me up in the middle of the night to go hunting. I f king hate hunting. A few weeks prior to this night I saw an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark about the Jersey Devil. I was on edge because I knew my dad would make me go hunting soon and we sometimes hunt in Jersey, sure as shit. He wakes me up one morning at like 3 am and we are off to the woods in Jersey and pitch black so that he could be there and all set up before the deer come out, I'm up in the stand, starting to calm down, when I see a little figure on the ground. It's human, with a face I can barely make out since it's a bit far in the distance, but I know it's human, and it's like 2 to 3 feet tall, I'm losing my SHT but don't wanna say anything because I know my dad will just tell me to suck it up, I stare at this afker for at least 4 hours until we get down from the stand and walk towards it to leave, it's a afking lawn gnome. Miles and miles into the deep woods. There's no roads for a long while and certainly no houses. How the FCK did a gnome get there? The stand we were in wasn't even a permanent stand. It was one we out up when we got there. Camping with two friends, middle of the night, all three of us inside square dome tent, just chilling out, chatting, lights are on. One side of wall begins to cave inward, as if there's strong wind or something slash one pushing on the side of the tent, connect with something slash one, feeling of punching flesh is unmistakable. Now I freak the FCK out. What slash who did I just punch through the tent wall? Convince friends it's smartest to have a look outside the tent. But it's 15 minutes later by the time they agree, and there's nothing there. Just a few weeks ago we were on a road trip from BC to San Diego and we came upon a campsite just outside of Crescent City, California. We drove through, one side of the campground was relatively empty, I noticed a few scattered tents but nobody close to the location we ended up picking. We wanted an early night so I started a fire while my girlfriend started cooking. We ate, had a few beers, and climbed up to our rooftop tent. Tempwe, with our dog by 9 p.m. or so. I had a rough time sleeping and woke up a few times but finally fell into a decent sleep, in the pitch dark with all of our tent windows and canvases closed I was awoken at 1 a.m. by someone whistling outside of our tent the tune of when the saints come marching in. After a few minutes of this repetitive whistling I nudged my girlfriend who awoke and was obviously freaked out as well, the verbiage and tone kept getting more aggressive so we decided we had to make a move. I slowly unzipped the tent while our guard dog was snoring and got my head out of the tent. I took a few seconds to let my eyes adjust and figure out where the person was. We flipped the tent up without securing it and we jumped into a truck, while the person was still whistling, to a motel in Crescent City, 
The next morning we drove back to get the few belongings that weren't in the truck and a family who had been camping a few sites over said it went on for another two to three hours and it was the scariest thing their family had ever experienced. I used to spend a lot of time solo camping in and around the Indian Peaks wilderness in CO and experienced some weird stuff. Nothing that was outright supernatural, but just unsettling. I love those woods but they give me the creeps. Here are some notable examples from 4 to 5 trips up there in all seasons. 1. After thinking that a particular area under a tree and against a rock looked like a great place to set up for the night, I found a shredded sleeping bag and old, must have been 20 years or more, camp supplies. I camped elsewhere. Was solo backpacking and decided to stop for the night as it was right around sunset. Got everything set up and I heard a car on a road about 1500 feet from my position. Honestly. I didn't even realize there was a road there because it was up a steep embankment and I couldn't see it. I hear a group of men talking, but they were too far away to make out what they were saying. By now the sun has set and the men begin using flashlights. They appear to be descending the steep embankment towards me. I'm not a little concerned as nothing about this is adding up, they stop about halfway down and then. They start fking digging, with shovels. Now I'm shitting my pants, they dig for about an hour, then stop. Then I hear the car return. They begin to ascend up the embankment but before they do, they shine their flashlights down onto my position, I just sat there, didn't move a muscle for at least an hour after they had gone. I packed up and moved about a one quarter mile away, deeper into the woods and well of the trail, just in case they had seen me and were going to come back for me, he asked me to accompany him to the spot. But I refused. Two tents, next to each other about five feet apart in the middle of the mountains. Had my three little brothers in one tent and me and my GF in the other, it's night time and we have just put the fire out, so it's dark. Everyone is in their respective tents snoozing off into dreamland. About an hour later I'm the only one awake just daydreaming, suddenly I hear soft human-like footsteps circling our tents over and over. Confused, I ask who's there with no response but continued footsteps so I stepped outside, no one, footsteps stop. I go back into my tent. Footsteps start again, I make my presence known and go back out. No one, footsteps stop. Of course I check on my brothers but they are asleep and sound. I repeat this same process about 4 to 5 more times believe it or not, lol. Footsteps always stopped, when morning came I asked my brothers how they slept and they responded with, fine, except for you walking, loudly, all around the goddamn campsite all night. My dad was up camping in Canada. He was sleeping naked in his tent in a patch of woods near some train tracks. A bear cub came rustling up and messing with the tent. My dad who had long hair and a beard at the time grabs a long bowie knife and runs outside the tent, notices the bear cub. He backs up near the train tracks just as an early morning freight train comes by. He could see the engineer looking at him in horror thinking this long haired bearded hippie with a big knife was gonna try to hijack the train. When I was about 18 me and some friends took a road trip about 7 hours or so down to the Apalaki Kola National Forest near Tallahassee FL. We were going to do a little car camping, drink a few ice cold natty lights. You know, 18 year old stuff, got there, set up camp, had said natty lights, and me and a guy decided to go do a little exploring, so we walked about 100 yards from our site back to the main road, saw another path directly across from us, and started walking big bags of trash, stuff like that. Should have been a huge red flag to turn around. But you know. 18. Nothing could hurt us. So we get to this campsite of an older white guy living out of his van. Clothes lines strung up, coolers places around it, and a big gorgeous dog, I think maybe a golden retriever. He's friendly enough, asks us where we're from, tells us about some cool spots to check out in the park. We end up chatting for 10 minutes and going on our way. I kept thinking to myself how odd it was that he gave directions in steps, not yards or miles. Guy always seemed to be off balance, oh and he was super excited to talk about national parks and forests where we were from, okay. Camping part over. We went back to our tents. Fast forward 2 months, same buddy calls me late at night and tells me to turn on TV to the news, I oblige. I see an old dude with a van. You see where this is headed but I didn't. So I get pissed at my friend for waking me up, what the fck? That man's name was Gary Michael Hilton, convicted of at least 4 murders. 
he kidnapped and murdered a girl on Blood Mountain GA, an older couple in the Pisca NC, and a girl in the Apalaki Cola at that campsite not long after we left. Obviously we call the cops, they put us in touch with the FBI, F is for Florida, and we get flown down to take investigators to the campsite. Point out every spot we saw anything, tell them exactly what he told us, and show them the places he described to us, had to fly down again to testify. Had lions, leopards, and elephants outside the tent. Lions seem to think of tents as solid objects so they're not much of a worry, which is small comfort when one is coughing two feet from your head. Elephants are a real worry and dangerous as FCK, but they had no reason to do anything but saunter by, apparently they gave my supply tent some attention but thought the better of it. We mostly stay in the tent at night, and if you have to take a piss, you don't go far from the fire. Went camping with my girlfriend last year. We arrived to the campsite only to see the ranger putting up signs stating that this was the last weekend the campsites were open due to the end of the season. That night we decided our tent was not going to keep us warm enough so we slept in the car. The next morning we woke up and noticed a huge paw print on the back window right above where our heads were. Thankfully we didn't have any food in the car but still creepy finding the bare paw print. Camping with family slash friends up in the mountains. Sharing a tent with my brother, call him Luke and another friend, call him Evan. We all passed out after a few episodes and I woke up sometime during the night into an episode of sleep paralysis. I have weird sleep habits and experience sleep paralysis every few months or so. For those who haven't had it, basically you're awake but you cannot move, and sometimes experience auditory and visual hallucinations. My computer hadn't yet died so I could see my surroundings in the dim light of the screen. I watched the fabric compress as something pushed against it sporadically about 4 feet off the ground, then moved around the tent towards me, it looked like a claw. I was terrified and filled with adrenaline but another part of me remained calm, assuring my body it was all a dream. I couldn't do anything anyway, so my fear was pointless. But as I continued to observe it my sleep paralysis began to fade, and I realized I could move. I tried to get him to look and see if there was really something there but I must have sounded like I was sleep talking because he just rolled over and went back to sleep, waving me off. Eventually the rustling stopped and I was tired and groggy enough that I quickly fell back asleep, in the morning I'd completely forgotten about it, that is, until my brother-in-law, who was in the other tent, call him Dean, said to us, it's a good thing we put the dog in the car last night, it hit me like a truck. I had seen the bear and calmly watched it test the fabric of my tent 12 inches from my face. Not me but my parents. They went camping on their honeymoon 20 years ago, still married. They went to the Garden of the Gods. This is in hit country. Southern Illinois everyone's related type place. But they're walking the trails they and stumble upon a dead body, my mom pushes my dad over and gets the FCK up out of there. They go to town which is like 25 minutes away and tell the chief policeman there. He thinks they're just f-king with him since they're both young at the time. 18 and 19. Anyways he finally decides to check it out after them hounding him. He had been stabbed or something like that. Not sure on the details of how he died. But I have heard that story a million times growing up and thought I'd share it with reddit. Just a few weeks ago we made our way to a very remote valley that is very difficult to access, think walking on one inch ledges, dropping into narrow crevasses etc the valley ends in a sharp drop with a waterfall that is about 100 feet high we were almost at the drop when we heard a whistle according to our calculations that group should have long left and headed back to the base camp so it made no sense then we heard another whistle we yelled hello and immediately we heard a whistle back the whistle was coming up from the thick trees up on the very steep slope of the mountains encircling the valley the slope was about 75 to 80 degrees the only way we could make it up there would be if we were pulling ourselves up by tree branches and roots because it was so steep, it rose right above us, then turned around and flew away. It was an unmarked helicopter, and the nearest airfield is about 100 miles away, we figured they had to have a search mission out for someone, so that must have been a hiker's whistle. However, it was strange that the person would whistle repeatedly, but never yell back. We yelled again. The whistle recurred. Suddenly, we heard the helicopter rotor again. We went ahead and crossed the creek to climb the mountain slope. We scrambled up, grabbing onto roots and branches. The whistling ceased. We yelled a few times and no response. It took us four hours to make our way out of there after, 
The bushes were so thick that at times we walked on branches above the ground and I could not see my hand in front of me. I still have no idea who was whistling, it was a very mechanical whistle. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.